Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this tomahawk out of steel. This tomahawk has a hardened carbon steel blade made from an old circular saw blade and it's also got a wooden handle which is an old axe handle. It's very sharp and it's pretty good for cutting, splitting and also for throwing. In this tutorial, after I've made the axe head, I'm going to be showing you how to make the basic axe handle out of just a normal handle from an old hammer. But then next week, I'm going to be showing you how to make a much more advanced handle from aluminium and mahogany. This is what that handle will look like and the tutorial will be up sometime next week or maybe the week after. So now let's see how to make the tomahawk. So I started off with a piece of old circular saw blade from a sawmill which I got and this is left over from when I made my full tang sword, the link will be in the description to go and see that video because this is made from the same steel. The reason that I picked steel from an old circular saw blade is because it's already been heat treated so it's really hard and very tough. If you did just use some random old steel then it will probably not be quite this good because it's very soft and it's quite hard to heat treat just normal mild steel. If you also use something like carbon steel, high carbon steel or O1 tool steel then that would mean that after you've made the blade you then have to heat treat it before you could assemble the handle. I stuck on some paper and drew out the design using pencil and as you can see at the back I incorporated one of the teeth of the blade into the back of the tomahawk just like I did with the sword as well. I've also added spikes going off in most directions so that when you throw it, it will stab in like a ninja star kind of into the wood which you throw it at. So now it's time to cut out the tomahawk blade and I'm going to be using an angle grinder with a very thin cut off wheel for that. This also makes loads of sparks and it's pretty dangerous so remember to wear all of the necessary safety equipment. Since the steel is so tough, an angle grind is pretty much all that you could use to cut it out because it would blunt in something like a bandsaw blade or anything else. This is what it looks like once it's been roughly cut out with the angle grinder. To refine the shape of the blade and get rid of any of the rough marks left behind by the angle grinder, I'm going to be using my belt sander for that. Again, since the steel is so tough, you probably couldn't use anything like files, but you could use an angle grinder again with a grinding wheel or a flap wheel, or you could also use a bench grinder with a stone grinding wheel. When I'm grinding using my belt sander, I'm making sure that I'm trying to make everything symmetrical and look good. And I've done all of this by eye and none of this was measured up or anything like that. For some of the smaller curves like this one here, I'm going to be using a sanding drum. I bought these off eBay and they're only £6 for a kit of them and you can get replaceable sanding wheels that you put on them. And they're pretty good for shaping corners and curves, especially in metal. Here I'm using a stone grinding wheel which I've got and as I'm grinding with any of the power tools, even the Dremels, I'm going to make sure that I don't overheat any of the steel because that would then ruin the heat treatment process that was done on it earlier. To stop the steel from overheating, remember to constantly keep on quenching it in water so that it never gets too hot to touch on any of the steel. So this is what the tomahawk looks like after rough shaping and the axe head's in pretty good shape now and I like the shape that it's in at the moment. Now I'm going to start to grind all of the blades. So as usual for any of the grinding which I'm going to be doing on this, I'm going to be using my belt sander and if you are into a lot of metalwork projects, I would definitely recommend investing in a belt sander or something like this. This one was quite expensive, it was about £120 but you can also get cheaper ones that work quite good. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm grinding the main blade, I'm going to set it at the angle that I want to grind it at and I'm not going to grind it in quite as sharp an angle as on a knife because this is going to be for splitting and cutting, not as much as a knife is just for carving and I'm then going to keep it at that angle and curve it along all of the blade and make sure that it's even and then I'm going to grind that side so that it's halfway down the metal. So this is what the blade looks like once I've ground half of one of the edges and as you can see this grind comes halfway down the steel like this and as you can see it's also very very flat and smooth and it's all at the same angle. Now I need to do it on the other side. So I've turned my belt sand around so that I can get the same angle and I want to try and keep it at the exact same angle as the other side and at the exact same smoothness and I want to grind it until it meets in the middle and creates a bird edge. So the way that I'm grinding both of the sides is I hold my blade at one angle and then I start at the very top of the blade and then curve all the way down until it reaches the bottom and that makes sure that it's very even. And as always, especially with the blade, remember to keep on quenching it in water so that it doesn't overheat and ruin the heat treatment. So this is what the blade looks like once I've ground it on both sides and as you can see it comes and meets in the middle in a really sharp blade like this. 
This is going to be really good for chopping wood and stuff. Now I'm going to grind this blade on the back for when I throw it so that it'll stab in with both sides. This blade on the back is ground in a very similar way but apart from it's much smaller. Thinner parts of the metal are going to heat up more quickly because they're much smaller and there's less metal to heat up so you need to remember to quench them more often in the water. So now that I've made this blade on the back I'm also just going to outline the blade profile on this small curve here just by using quite a large sanding drum like this. This blade's not really a proper blade, it's just kind of for a more aesthetic look and it'll make it look pretty cool and it's also outlining the same angle as the angle that was ground onto one of the teeth of the circular saw blade. This is what the axe head looks like once that's been done and I think it looks pretty cool. Before we move on to the next steps, I'm just going to spray the blade black with this black spray paint. So this is what the blade looks like once I've finished spray painting it and I've given it two layers and it's been left to dry for a couple of hours and it's now completely solid and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sanding drums and just take off all of the paint where the bladed sections are so that they're silver and then that'll make it look really cool. So this is what the tomahawk blade looks like once I've taken off all of the paint in places where I want it. Now it's time to mount the handle on like this. So attach the blade to the handle, I need to cut a slot down here. So the first thing that I need to do is mark on where to cut the slot to. So lay the tomahawk down and have a little bit of the spike poking out of the end. And then take a pencil. And then take a pencil that actually works. And then draw a line across here where the tomahawk blade ends. Now I mark what looks like the middle here. And then the middle at the top here. And then I'm just going to take something straight, this is just an old hacksaw blade, and draw the line all the way down until they connect up. So now I'm just going to take a regular wood saw, line it up with this line, and then start to cut the groove all the way down. It's very important that as you cut down the axe handle that you make sure that you keep this cut completely vertical. So this is what the slot looks like once it's been cut and as you can see it's completely vertical all the way down the handle. Now I'm just gently hammering in the blade into the slot making sure not to damage any of the edges of the steel just hammering on flat parts and also making sure not to crack the wood. This is what the blade looks like once I've hammered it into the wood and it's already pretty strong and it's not going to come out that easily. Now I'm going to start to roughly start shaping the end of the handle so that it looks a lot better because this is actually an axe handle that's snapped off and I don't want that jagged edge. So eventually I decided to shape it more evenly, I just had to take the handle off again and I've shaped on the belt sander so that it's curved and spiky and then it fits together like this. I've also added some false blades on the tip here, they're not complete blades but they make it look a little bit cooler as well. Now I'm going to be using some epoxy resin to glue this shaft of the stick all the way onto the tomahawk like this. This is a two part 24 hour set epoxy resin, you can also use other epoxy resins but I recommend 24 hour set because it's the strongest one. Of course as soon as you leave the blade to dry in the handle then you need to make sure that it's in the perfect position that you want because you're not going to be able to move it once the epoxy is set. This is what it looks like once the glue is set and the blade's in there really, really strong. Now I've taken a rat tail file and then filed all of these grooves where the string is going to attach all the way around and I need to do it on the other side now. These grooves are just to make sure that the string isn't too exposed so it doesn't get cut when you chop things and also it's to make sure that it doesn't just fall off so it's got some grooves to kind of grip into. So now it's time to start tying the string around the handle. I'm going to be using some very thin kite line and it's really, really strong because it's made for holding kites back and it's made of nylon so it's pretty waterproof. Basically just weave it multiple times around the handle in different places and make sure that you're pulling it very tightly and then overall with all of the hundreds of different layers of string it's going to bind it really strong. So the tomahawk blade is now fully functional, it doesn't look very good with all of this messy string but it's also 
really strong and it's definitely attached to the handle very well and it's really fun to use for just chopping stuff and also for throwing at trees. Because of all of the different spikes like on the top and the bottom of the blade, the entire blade itself, this spike and then the top and the bottom of this spike, this pretty much stabs in like a ninja star usually with more than one point and if it hits with any of this kind of front half of the blade it's definitely going to stab into the tree. Then over the black string I've just gone and wrapped some black electrical tape just to cover up the string because it was white and it didn't look very good. Now it's time to test out the tomahawk and see what it can do. As you can see the tomahawk stabbed in here quite far and deep into the wood and then also with a little bit of penetration on this point as well. I've resharpened the tomahawk up and I'm now going to start trying to chop some things like this can. So I just found a bit of one of the cans and as you can see it's pretty much cleanly cut apart from on this side and I expect that was maybe done by this part which wasn't sharp or maybe even just by this big piece of wood here. So that worked pretty well, now let me talk about the tomahawk. Is it sharp? Yes it's pretty sharp, it's about as sharp as a knife that I'd normally have and I've sharpened it on a whetstone and it can easily pass the paper test. Is it good? Well it could be better but it's pretty good now. And what's it really good for? Well it's not that great for chopping logs because the blade is so thin and it will probably just get stuck in a log if I tried to chop it. And also the problem is as soon as it gets to this part here, this is really fat and this won't, won't, won't want to go through the log. And also this handle isn't very strong. If I come around this side, you can actually see quite a large crack is forming there. So I'm gonna have to take this handle off now, otherwise it will become unsafe and I don't want the tomahawk head falling off while I'm trying to use it because that would injure me. So my plan next is to upgrade this tomahawk. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this wooden handle just by burning it off or breaking it off or something. And then I'm going to replace all of this wood with thin 3mm thick aluminium bolted on in all of the corners. And it will be very flush with the steel so that it will be much better for chopping logs and cutting things like that because it will be much more streamlined. So if this plan works it should be up sometime in the next three weeks and when it's done I'll post a link to the video in the description of this video. So as you can see this is what it looks like once I've finished making it and it looks pretty cool at the moment. So as I said earlier, the video probably won't be out for the next couple of weeks 
and the reason for that being is because I've got loads and loads of schoolwork for the moment and that's really taking priority but hopefully I'll be able to get a video out sometime soon. So sorry if it's a while before my next upload but I really want to try and keep my video quality very high even though I'm having less and less time to do this sort of thing lately. Hopefully soon once the term gets going again I'll get a bit less homework and I'll be able to spend more time doing things like this. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you have please hit the like button down below and subscribe. If you did enjoy my video you might like some of my others and you can see previews of them here. If you want to find out the full videos then go to my channel and check them out.